You're listening to Mammal Watching with Charles Foley and John Hall. You can find other episodes at mammalwatching.com slash podcast. The first thing I looked at, this was my PhD, um, was male color um, and how, how it develops as, as males mature um, and what might be causing males to be so colorful, so bright red. Males, male color does develop, develop through adolescence, um, but the adults can be bright red or less red, pale, um, and they can change. So a male that has, is fully adult, even perhaps reaching the end of his prime, if he's given the opportunity, can develop bright red coloration. And that opportunity would be becoming dominant. Um, and likewise, when they lose their rank, they can lose their color. Um, and then related to that, the red coloration is related to testosterone, uh, which is what you might expect. So if it's, re- if it's re- related to rank, rank is related to testosterone. Um, and the higher the testosterone, the brighter the color red and the more extensive red. Um, but I also showed that females like red. So females spend more time with males that are brightly colored. They seek them out. They invite, they solicit copulations from bright red males more than they do from pale males. Um, so that helps us to understand why mandrels might be or are so exceptional because it's both competitions so and males are scared of red and uh, uh, make choice in that females like red. So I think most of my misadventures, they come from the situation, the, the state of the roads in Gable. So you mentioned that Franceville is a long way from Libreville and, and the coast. Um, the road is sometimes in, in a good state. Most of the time it's not. Um, and so I have spent a lot of time in mud holes. Um, or my favorite things I think are sitting on a platform or sitting in a boat and observing animals calmly. If you'd like to listen to the full episode, then visit mammalwatching.com slash podcast.